Now, a threat with any using of any herbicides is the potential for drift. Well, here we're going to be able to see some images of what some common herbicide uh, drift damage looks like on hemp plants. Welcome to this Tobacco University video where we're going to look at herbicide damage symptoms on hemp. So first off, there is this great reference article, and you're welcome to take a look at it from the University of California, and they look at herbicide damage symptoms on hemp. Provide the link here, um, and they go through more herbicides that I'm going to cover here. Try to pick out some of the very common ones that might be utilized that you might see or be familiar with, but this article has even more resources if you want to take a look at that. So first off, looking at herbicides in general, well, here's the active ingredients and trade names. A lot of people kind of focus on the trade names, but looking at that active ingredient is important understanding. Also common registered uses, at least in California at the time that this data was pulled, just to give you an idea. Probably the most famous one is Roundup, is, and the active ingredient is glyphosate. We'll also be looking at a couple more, kind of listed more by their active ingredient. So compared to this list here, you might be familiar with the trade name. Now glyphosate, as I mentioned that first one there, uh, typically you know, Roundup, it's a post-emergent um, herbicide, meaning the weeds need to emerge before you spray them, and it affects the meristematic regions likely damaged by drift on the hemp plants. You want to look for chlorosis, which is a yellowing uh, that can progress to browning over five to 10 days. It's a slow progression. We can see that evident here, where it's a little lighter in that yellow coloration. Here, it's a little bit more evident here. This would be uh, clear uh, signs of glyphosate drift that may have occurred on your hemp plants. Then we also have a paraquat here, and this is another post-emergent. You can see kind of an example here. It's a group D. Uh, acts rapidly within hours, and drift can appear as droplets browning necrosis. So we kind of get that little like speckling effect. Now, of course, if it occurs in a larger degree, you will get browning of the entire leaf, but sometimes Evan is that little like speckling um, that might occur, and that can be an indication that you're getting some spray drift from this particular herbicide. Then we have glucosinate, which is injury often a function of concentration as well as coverage. Common um, uh, trade name would be X out, if you're familiar with that type. Uh, typical symptoms initially occur within a few days, beginning with wilting and chlorosis and progressing to necrotic tissue. Here we see a little more aggressive of that kind of spotting there, a little more aggressive uh, spread. Um, and again, this occurs typically a few days. Uh, again, the evidence that this herbicide might have been drifted. Then propanil, we see that one right here. Uh, injury is usually first observed in the older, fully formed leaves. So that's, again, an important distinction to make here, looking at the older leaf damage, not necessarily the meristem. Injury is often initially noted at the leaf margins, as is the edges of the leaves, and then moves further into the intervenal areas of the leaf. So it kind of starts at the margins and works its way in. If the plant survives of uh, this foliar exposure, newly formed leaves may not be effective. So this is one that the plant can potentially grow out of it. Uh, where is this herbicide typically used? Well, typically used for barnyard grasses. So if you have those in your particular area, uh, might be spraying this at a higher frequency, this would be evidence of what drift to be on the lookout for. And then lastly, mentioned here, uh, synthetic auxins, and there's different types. Uh, at uh, the whole plant level, this abnormal growth can take the form of leaf and stem twisting, cupping, bending, cracking, sometimes curling uh, may occur. Uh, and we see kind of the evidence here of the plant just kind of like gets a little funky uh, look to it. Again, just because you see leaf curling doesn't always mean it's uh, herbicide that was applied. But if you know one of these has been applied in the area, uh, particularly 2,4-D, very known for its drifting abilities, and you see this curling, that's an indication that you may be getting some of that herbicide drift. Uh, so just things to be cautious for. So I just wanted to provide you with this kind of comparison here. Uh, if you are choosing the herbicide route, to be mindful of what product you'll be using and to be mindful of what those symptoms may look on hemp plants to be aware if, you, if drift is occurring uh, after your application.